Hello folks, it's time for another installment of our Video Byte series, formerly known as the Malware Monthly. This week we'll discuss how a ransomware attack resulted in death, why your multi-factor authentication is in jeopardy thanks to a new Android malware, what new and wacky trick Maze is doing to encrypt files, and finally we'll discuss Zero Logon, a serious vulnerability that has security staff freaking out and criminals jumping for joy. So sit back, relax, here comes the facts. A woman dies during a ransomware attack on a German hospital. A ransomware attack against Dusseldorf University Hospital in Germany is responsible for degrading systems enough to prevent new emergency patients from being admitted. A woman in a life-threatening condition had to be diverted to a hospital 20 miles away because of the ransomware attack. Unfortunately, because of this redirection, the woman died before doctors were able to treat her. The attackers were going after the university itself, not the hospital. Once law enforcement informed the attackers of what happened, they released the keys. German police are moving forward with both identifying the individuals behind the ransomware attack as well as potentially charging them with negligent manslaughter because of the woman's death. This this is the first case of a ransomware attack directly leading to a death. Neither side wanted this to happen, however greed, combined with a failure of due diligence and a disregard for institutions of higher learning and health have shown us the true danger of these forms of attack. Will the case of a ransomware leading to death cause criminals to cool their jets and be more careful about who they attack? At the same time, isn't this also a lesson of the importance of redundant systems and policies? In an article about this attack by Nicole Wetzman of The Verge, she mentions, Healthcare facilities are one of the biggest targets for cyber attacks, and cybersecurity experts have warned for years that most hospitals aren't prepared. They rely heavily on devices, like radiology equipment, that are often connected to the internet. Without those tools, they aren't as able to treat patients. Let's hope it doesn't happen again. New alien Android Trojan wants to defeat your two-factor authentication. A newly discovered Android malware has been reported by researchers at Threat Fabric to be a fork of the Cerberus Android malware, and by using remote administrative tools are potentially able to defeat multi-factor authentication using a mobile device. The malware can download and install the remote administration tool TeamViewer to the device. It then sets up TeamViewer server connections, which provides the actors with full remote control of the device's interface. This means they can access and change settings, install or delete apps, as well as using any app installed on the device, such as banking apps, social media, or multi-factor authentication apps. The malware has been active since January of 2020 and is offered on the darknet as a malware as a service, basically providing the malware to customers who then go about distributing the malware in a variety of ways. Earlier in the year, the group behind the Cerberus Android Banking Trojan decided to shut down operations and release the source code of their malware. Researchers believe that the Cerberus developers also developed Alien. Regardless, Threat Fabric believe that more actors will create their own malware using the release source code from Cerberus. So long story short, we're likely going to see more Cerberus clones during the rest of 2020 and probably into 2021. Maze Ransomware takes a page from Ragnar Locker. Researchers from Sophos recently identified a new feature of the Maze ransomware after investigating an attack on one of their customers. The new feature involves Maze first failing to infect a system through its traditional methods, then going the extra step of downloading and launching a virtual machine on the victim system. Once the virtual machine is running, the malware connects it to the local hard drives as a share, then launches the ransomware from inside the virtual machine. This will encrypt the files in the shared folders. The worst part is, this method of encryption is incredibly effective as security or logging tools do not have eyes inside of the virtual machine, so the malware encrypts files without interruption. This method was originally observed by Ragnar Locker back in May, and many researchers were surprised to see the same functionality built into a different ransomware family. Ragnar Locker used a 400 megabyte Windows XP image to infect systems, and for some reason, the maze actors decided they wanted a Windows 7 image, which is about 1.4 gigabytes in size. The time and system requirements, like space and processing power, to launch this form of attack would usually be a red flag to anyone monitoring the network. However, since this method of ransomware infection seems to be a last resort for Maze, it could mean that we may only see it from an attack that has already gained persistence on the network and knows what the endpoints are capable of, and or how much anyone would notice 2 gigabytes being downloaded without user activity. Serious vulnerability, zero logon, is being actively exploited in the wild. 
In August, Microsoft issued a patch for a vulnerability called Zero Logon, found in how endpoints authenticate with their domain control server. Exploiting this vulnerability has the potential of an attacker gaining domain administrator access in only a few seconds. The exploit requires an attacker to have already gained access to the network. Once on, however, the attacker can utilize a corporate network connected endpoint to communicate with the domain controller and, using this exploit, gain the ability to change network passwords and execute execute any commands they want. A proof of concept for this exploit resulted in a researcher gaining domain administrator access in 10 seconds. Since today's attackers frequently attempt to spread laterally on an infected network in order to spread ransomware, being able to use this exploit would make their jobs much easier and allow them to go from initial infection to full network ransom in a short amount of time. Microsoft issued the first of two patches on August 11th and plans on releasing another in early 2021 to completely remediate this vulnerability. However, additional patches have been pushed out by third-party vendors to secure any holes the first Microsoft patch failed to deal with. Both Samba and Zero Patch have issued their own fixes for this vulnerability. Right now, it's important to make sure these patches are rolled out on any domain controller you have on your network. Unfortunately, there are going to be a lot of organizations who fail to patch, and it's likely a matter of time before they fall victim to this method of attack. That's it for today's video bite. Stay safe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.